Welcome to The Better Life with Dr. Mary Ann Pinkston. Join Dr. Pinkston today as she teaches you how an integrative approach to health, combining holistic and contemporary medical information, can lead you to the better life. And now here's your host, Dr. Mary Ann Pinkston. Hello there and welcome in to The Better Life with Dr. Pinkston. I am Dr. Mary Ann Pinkston, a family practitioner and integrative medicine doctor here in San Antonio, Texas, and kind of running this show on radio in San Antonio, but I'm also on YouTube and the uh, podcast uh, platform. So all of them basically, and you can go to drpbetterlife.com and find all of those links to all those platforms. And every third, uh, every third week of the month, uh, third Sunday of the month, I always have one of my dear good friends and mentor and a sponsor as well. I have Ray Solano from PD labs up in Cedar Park, Texas, which is close to Austin. And we always have something fantastic and interesting. Ray drives this. uh, Every time we have a, a show together, he drives these wonderful topics because he's so full of great information. So he went off to Vegas this uh, this weekend, I think came back with some great stuff. How are you doing, Ray? You doing okay? Well, I'm doing well. And thank you so much for letting me join you with your audience today. Absolutely. It is always a significant pleasure. So what do you have in store for us today? Well, you know, we do. This is Heart Month. Heart. What, what do we call it? Uh, uh, health aware, uh, heart healthy awareness month. Right. But, you know, we put a lot of words together, but we don't put a lot of awareness together. True. So I think it's really important for people True. to be aware of their heart health. Yes. And there's some simple things. You know, it is still the number one cause of death is heart disease. And Unfortunately, most people don't know what to do about that. Uh, blood pressure. You know, we know we talk uh, blood pressure. Do you know your blood pressure? Uh, most people don't know their blood pressure. Right. And, th- and also there, you know, everybody seems to know some of their lab values. What is it? when you ask a room of people what their cholesterol numbers are, mm-hmm. everybody will raise their hand. Right. Right. It, it, they, they will know their those numbers, but you may ask them the question, do you know you're resting your blood sugar levels right. maybe after a meal? And if you ask a hundred people, two people will know. Right. Uh, and then if you also say, well, how many people are taking seven to nine vegetables, eating seven to nine vegetables a day? We did it in a room uh, in, in Las Vegas for, this is a group of health professionals. Right. How many people do you think raised their hand for (laughs) seven to nine vegetables? There was three. Right. Something really Uh, uh, (laughs) I'm I'm not sure even I at this point would raise my hand. So, you know, it it is uh, the awareness of what you're eating and connecting it to your heart is something that I think people need to be aware. And they say, well, well, they don't want to have foods that will have high cholesterol numbers. That seems like everybody is beating that into their, their brains. But unfortunately, we know a little bit more. Uh, there, there are some uh, unique enzymes that are connected in your gut, in your, in your GI tract, that have a direct correlation to adverse cardiovascular events. And so this is something, there's a a very easy on a blood test uh, to be able to determine the substance, you know, and we're, it's kind of, you know, everybody knows acronyms. Okay. So T-M-A-O. Okay. So it's easy for people to just remember T-M-A-O without the long name is trimethyl N-oxide, trimethylamine, trimethylamine N-oxide. So you don't really need to know that, but it's produced when your body digests red meats, uh, shellfish, uh, egg yolks, it may raise the risk uh, cardiovascular problems. And this is this is not uh, something from this obscure journals. This is Harvard Health Publishing, right. and it is uh, published on the NIH website. So this is something I think that uh, we found out also that most cardiologists are not measuring this. Nope. And most cardiologists are not making their patients aware of this. Right. And so I was sitting next to a uh, uh, couple of uh, pharmacist friends that you probably would know that have 
ongoing cardiovascular problems. Mm -hmm. And he, he whispered to me, he says, Ray, you know, my cardiologist never mentioned this to me in right. 15 years. Right. So it, 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 and it, I think everybody would need to want to know, you know, how do you reduce your risk of an event? And this is what we we you know, this is why we're here on this radio show, uh, talk show for you is to get people awareness that uh, there's a connection there. Uh, and you know what? There's some simple things you can do to uh, measure it and also be able to reduce it. Absolutely. You know, it, it amazes me, you know, talking about cardiologists and how they don't check certain things and there, you know, cardiovascular disease is a silent killer in a way. It takes decades for you to develop, you know, heart disease and, and atherosclerosis. And it is something that everybody thinks, well, it'll happen when I'm older. So I've got time. I'll just, you know, I'll take, uh, I'll eat bad today. And, and this week, you know, it's Christmas, I'll, I'll eat bad. And then I'll, at the beginning of the year, I'll, I'll get better. I'll take care of it then. And we just keep doing that, even with blood right. pressure and everything else. And then you go to your doctor, not just your cardiologist, but maybe somebody like me, a family practitioner. And well, I don't do this, but, you know, you go to your, your PCP and, or your uh, provider. And, you know, we check a basic cholesterol panel, the Framingham, right. you know, a cholesterol panel. And it's, four numbers, five, if you consider the ratio, but four numbers that don't really tell the story. So there's so much behind that. And I think most people just check that one simple little mm -hmm. test. And there's probably about 30 different things that you can check to look at your, you know, risk of cardiovascular disease and where you are right now, as opposed to where you'll be in 20 years or 30, if something bad is going to happen, but it can tell you where you're going in prevention so that you Very don't good. wind up developing heart disease down the road. It's not like you want to wait for the bomb to go off and then take care of it. Once it goes off to, you know, clean up the mess, you want to prevent the bomb from going off. And so there's so many different tests and most cardiologists don't test that, which blows my mind, but you know, a lot of primary care, you know, don't as well. So this is what you're talking about. This is, this is one of probably about 30 different things that we could check, but very important. Well, it, you're absolutely right. And, you know, lipo polysaccharides, LPS is, is another number. Uh, and I personally, I had the, my numbers were very high about a year ago and I had no idea. Right? Okay. And, you know, we, you, you, drink from the, uh, the, the, the daily routine of I take these many supplements, right. I do this, this, and this, everything's fine. Yeah. But when you look under the hood and really fine. look at the <laughs> measurements right. of some of these key indicators, this is something that we're looking at prevention five or 10 years from now. Right. Just, like, just like you mentioned, it doesn't happen right away. Exactly. And I'm sorry to interrupt that, that. Everybody says, I eat good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most of that. How many people so told you uh, they eat bad? How many people said that to you? They said, I eat really bad. Yeah, I've never heard anybody. That. <laughs> and they don't. They really That's don't. Right. They really don't understand what eating good really means. And a lot of people get just their information from Google or the, you know, the latest fad diet because right. doctors are not sitting with patients and telling them what's good or bad or how to eat. And, and one diet does not fit all. Well, that, that's right. Is it go eat good and exercise? Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, bye. Okay, good. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to have a, a I'm going to have a salad for lunch today, and that's what I'll. What, oh, by the way, uh, that dressing you just put on it has so many trans fats in it, yes. and it has. Well, we're going to throw all this, all this other processed foods on it. But I had a salad today, right. so unfortunately, it's not anybody's fault. Is yeah. nobody's being taught right. how to how to do this? Uh, but you know what? I, you do a lot of talk radio. You do. You, I'm a talk radio junkie. I listen to talk radio all the time. But you know what the number one shows are on talk radio? Sports. The sports. Sports and finance. Okay? Yeah. That, that's it. Sports and finance. Yeah. Sports is sports shows. You know, I don't know about you, but many sporting events don't really have a lot of healthy foods, but yeah. uh, no, no broccoli, or as we said, no broccoli <laughs> shakes, you know, barbecued bar broccoli. I haven't seen that lately, um, but, but it's, it's finance shows and they're talking about people how to save their money, but yeah. you and I both know the biggest uh, ways you can drain your, your savings is bad health. Exactly. 
So True. what we're talking about is maybe they can we can just convince people they can save money if they take uh, take care of their health. How about right. that? What do you think? What a thought, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. This will maybe you take some prebiotics and probiotics or maybe 40 grams of fiber. You know, that's the number. 40 grams of fiber a day. Right. Right. is will is probably the first step you can have it make it really simple yes uh, it, it may it may save you money you can probably live to 90 and have some money left over how's that <laughs> i hope yeah to, that would be lovely live to 90 is is uh is always the goal but to live there well right would be, would be the definite goal that great endpoint there so you were talking at the beginning about about you know the acronym the tim tmao so how when people go and get this tested what are they looking for how's it made what do they do and explain well that. It, I, you know we try to we don't want to get too in the details to for people because we want to make sure that they have something that they can uh, look forward to is is look for high levels of this in their blood tests and ask for that blood test uh, to see the correlation that and the LPS get the advanced cardiovascular panels and take a look at the correlation for the intake of, of these, these foods that are, can be linked to high levels of TMA, TMAO. But it's not everybody, right? I mean, that's right. Some people have the the good genes, the AP, APO threes and fours, unfortunately, can't handle more than 25 grams of the saturated fats. And some people don't have a problem, and well, that's fine. Uh, but if you are at that high risk group, that's some of in many of the people, you know, you know, I did see a lot of people that were overweight in Las Vegas. I yeah. really did. Yeah. Uh, I, I was blown away by the amount of obesity when we're talking people over 40 pounds uh, at least, or whatever the marker is that they may be at a high risk level. It's an, it's an inflammatory condition Mm -hmm. and you probably have to make changes in your, your diet uh, and to maybe these special prebiotics, prebiotics, inulin, they're simple, they're easy, they're inexpensive that you can, you can take on a daily basis. Right. And then the probiotics, mm-hmm. um, a combination of those two, allow your body's gut bacteria to reduce these levels, digest them. Right. So uh, maybe we have a with that barbecue, maybe we put a little pre sprinkle some prebiotics. You got a recipe for that? We can just do that. <laughs> I'll come up with one if it, if it'll help. But well, so I don't think many people know what prebiotics. I mean, everybody's heard of an antibiotic, and I think most people have heard of a probiotic, which they buy terrible versions of it over the counter and whatnot. So you definitely need to to let us guide you on the probiotic thing. But what are prebiotics? Uh, prebiotics are considered for, I call them fertilizer yeah. for our bugs. Okay. So they, they, you know, you can only take in so many, bu- uh, so many probiotics, but you have billions and billions of probiotics of these good bacteria in your GI tract. So you look at it for fer- fertilizer or miracle grow for your good bacteria. Uh, and they they sell uh, all different types of prebiotics. There, there's tons of them out there. Many of them have inulin, which is uh, sometimes derived from uh, apples. And, and there are some, a lot of natural substances that you can get uh, prebiotics from. And also, you know, one of the things that are cool potatoes, I don't know if you've seen this, potatoes that are cool, not hot, have a good amount of these starches Right. in them that the body looks at as, as food or prebiotics okay. as well. So some of these starchy uh, items that are not really uh, increasing your glucose levels, but they end up being these uh, feeding or this food for your good bacteria. Right. So that's what we want people to do is make some choices, uh, realize where the minefields are. You don't have to be locked in a closet and say, I can't go anywhere because uh, <laughs> everything I'm bored in water and let us all the rest of your life. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And they get depressed because they say, well, I can't eat anything then. You just took everything away. Right. And that's what we hear all the time. Well, what else is there? Yeah. <laughs> Truth, right. There's lot, lots of choices out there, right? 
<laughs> yes, absolutely. Lots of good choices. People don't realize how good food can be. So right. it is, you know, I, I know a lot of times when I'm <clears throat> talking with people who are not quite at the point where they can turn, you know, over a new leaf and, and start a good diet. And I tell people, you know, because they always look at me and the, the fact that I lost so much weight, the 160 uh, two pounds in the past that, you know, well, how did you do it? I want to do what you did. And I'm, you know, look at people and I'm like, I'm not sure you're ready to do what I did. I That's basically right. divorced food, but I didn't right. give up good food. I eat good all the time. But what they don't realize is when I eat a little bit of oatmeal or like a piece of sweet potato or something, that's very sweet to me. Now I don't have to add like a lot of brown sugar and butter and, you know, uh, high calorie dense things to, you know, to these things, just those by themselves taste good to me and just a little bit will do. And the rest is a big protein portion and whatnot. But I just divorced in my mind what good food really is, what tastes good to me. So, you know, it, it, people just don't understand. They just have to switch over their taste buds and their mind to something that isn't, you know, bad for them and, and see it as something good for them. Feed their body, feed their, you know, feed their muscles, feed their their body to become a machine, to metabolize things correctly. You know, it, it really is a, a big switch for people to, to go for. It's very hard. Well, I, you know, we always look for simple things and people just need to be able to cook. You know, my favorite is grilled vegetables, right? You can take any roasted vegetables and you start, you can cut up pretty much any green vegetable uh, and chop them up with some seasonings and put it in the oven. And you'd be surprised Good. at the, at the tremendous uh, flavors right. that you get. And you can serve those with every meal. Right. And then you can get your four or five vegetables in very nicely. You can easily digest them. You can uh, chop them up and put a, uh, a, a nice uh, blend together. Right. And, and that's not that hard. Uh, and, and once you start to make those choices and add the greens with every meal and just add, just get on a habit, where, where's my greens? Uh, and then you, you, you start to fill up. You know what? Don't tell anybody, but you may lose a few pounds. You too. might. It, it's no. It's no, it's something just, we yeah. Don't don't get into no, that trap, man. No, that's that's no. danger. So we are coming up on the the break here, and so uh, when we get back, Ray, we are going to talk a little bit more about the science of the gut and its ties to heart disease. So let's take a small break and then come back and fill people in on that. And uh, I think we've got a good uh, heart, heart health month heart show health. underneath us there. So we'll be right back. Hi, this is Ray Solano with your Healthy Choices Minute sponsored by Prescription Dispensing Labs. New research has concluded that implementing dietary changes could prevent gut inflammatory processes involved in some chronic diseases. Modulation of your gut microbes through diets enriched with vegetables, legumes, grains, nuts, and a higher intake of plants over animal foods has a potential to prevent intestinal inflammatory conditions at the core of many chronic diseases. In short, the foods we eat in our dietary patterns have a major influence on our immune system that can cause many conditions we are suffering from today. Solution, try our OptiMeal Shake. Our team has developed the best tasting, healthiest shake you've ever experienced to control blood sugar and to improve your gut. Start your day today with a healthy choice. Call us today at 888-909-0110 for a free sample of the OptiMeal Shake. 888-909-0110. Remember, you have a choice in healthcare. Hello there. Welcome back. We are in the, the throes of heart health uh, month. I did, I'm not sure what the official name is, but every month there's something new and wonderful about health or, or something we need to recognize. And this month it is heart health. And so I have Ray Solano with me today. And every third week of the month, we talk about something wonderful for your health. And he's here. We're talking about heart health. So we were talking a little bit about the gut and how, you know, you and I harp on the gut a lot, I think. But I think at one point we may finally get it through to people how important the gut is and to so many different parts of the body, but also to the heart. So how is that tie made? 
Well, it, it, we, we see this connection between the gut and the, the GI tract and the brain. We know almost all of our neurotransmitters are, are made in the GI tract. The serotonin or even the melatonin is, is made in, in the uh, GI tract. So it's so important that we think that these things are somehow manufactured in our brain, but many of the connection uh, is in our GI tract. So if you start thinking as the, as your GI tract is, is the most important uh, organ that connects to your heart as well as to your brain, then you start thinking a little bit differently before you put certain foods in your mouth. And what we're, what we're finding now is there's certain levels of these, uh, these substances that are found in the GI tract that are made there that have a direct correlation to your risk for heart disease. Mm-hmm. And so this, it, what we're seeing, it's just a small little article out of uh, JAMA, the small mm-hmm. obscure uh, magazine, uh, uh, the Journal mm-hmm. of American Medical Association. It said that, you know, the recent analysis that's, that linked that it was people with high this TMAO, the trimethylamine and oxide levels, that people that have high levels have a double the risk of a cardiovascular event, stroke, or other serious uh, uh, injuries. You know, and this is, should be really something that everybody should know what their levels are, but what makes it even worse is nobody's even measuring that. Right. Uh, it's not, uh, you know what I think the reason why? There's not a drug that is out there that is worth a half a billion dollars or that you can be able to lower your numbers yet. Um, the, the things that are, that are, you can lower it are uh, just restrictions of changes in your diet. And guess what? It doesn't cost any money. Uh, exactly. That's even better. We don't better. need a drug, dear God. We don't need, we don't need another drug. drug. We just need to eat right, which is true for any, I feel any problem that we have is, we just need to eat right. It's so hard to do, though. It's so hard to eat right. Well, we make it really simple. They start out with a high quality protein shake first thing in the morning yes. that you add uh, uh, key nutrients to key healthy fats, uh, key uh, simple uh, or, or complex carbohydrates. But this is a perfect way to get that fiber in. You know, you got to have 40 grams of fiber a day, but you can do it very easily with a shake. Right. So you can add these. uh, We like the uh, the the OptiMeal shake that we put together. That has available um, through you. Uh, We can go to labsrx.com or you can hit my website for it, drpbetterlife.com. But you can go to Ray's site, pdlabsrx.com and find this uh, this product easily. It's easy. It tastes good. Mm-hmm. And it's got no stevia. We don't like, we, we, we prefer having uh, other sugars. Monk fruit is much better. Monk fruit is wonderful. Uh, it, it, and also it doesn't have any other glucose, or excuse me, any gluten. It's gluten. free from all the, it's a pea protein blend. So right. it has no milk in it, no dairy. So, you know, this is the start. You, what you do first thing in the morning starts the engines and, and then what people and then add some greens as mixed greens with a protein for lunch. Right. Um, and then, you know, you can then all of a sudden you got two meals in a bank. OK, so you're starting the day and you're allowing your digestion system to give a little bit of a rest. And then you can and then you finish it off uh, with some more vegetables and a protein for for dinner. And you, this is where you can add a little bit more carbohydrates to your dinner uh, to get you ready for a restful sleep. So the, the, these are some simple guidelines. And you can go to any restaurant anywhere and get uh, mixed greens with with salmon, mixed greens with any protein uh, and guess what? You don't have to go to any special places. Uh, I even went to Cheesecake Factory when I was out in Las Vegas <laughs> and I was able to still stay on it. And it, and it worked out. I had some of the, the one of the best meals I've had. I had a cheesecake, cheesecake factory. Can you believe that? Right. Yeah. You know, most places now are becoming a little bit more aware of people trying to eat healthy and they are providing, you know, better alternatives that people can just 
flip in their mind and make that decision for themselves to choose something a little bit healthier. And, and restaurants are complying with that. They even have gluten-free or dairy-free. And, you know, they're beginning to understand these things and, and uh, play to the public who is demanding this now. So, you know, you can find a good, a good, something good to eat anywhere you go. You don't, you don't have to give in and say, well, we went out and, you know, I just, I had to eat. That's the only thing that was there. So no, they, they are beginning to have better things. And, and, so. and green vegetables, mm -hmm. guess what? Are gluten-free. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the gluten-free. You know, we are coming up on uh, the last minute and a half here, right? This last part of the show always goes so fast. So I want to make sure everybody knows where they can reach you and where they can find this uh, shake and some of the prebiotics and probiotics and everything that you're talking about. So Ray can be found at pdlabsrx.com. And of course, you can go to my website at drpbetterlife.com. And you can find Ray and all that. They sponsor me and, and support me in a lot of ways. And I always truly appreciate that. So you can go to my page and find that and uh, plenty of other information. But also, you guys can be called, right? People can call you up on the phone. And what's your number? Uh, phone number is 512-219-0724. And you can also check out our website for a lot of health tips, pdlabsrx.com. And we also do uh, individual consultations, uh, nutritional consults. So for people that want to get a, a start on uh, this year, uh, please give us a call. We, we can definitely have appointments available to you that work directly with your office uh, to give people a plan yes. how they can get start to get control of their health. So check it out, pdlabsrx.com. And there's a tremendous amount of free health tips on our website and also our podcast as well. Absolutely. You do. You have an, an incredible amount of information. We love it. And I thank you very much. So, hey, that was the alarm that said, cut it. <laughs> Thanks, Shamaya, for that. Thanks again. Ray, thank you so much. And we will be with you in another couple of weeks. Take care until then. Okay, and everybody care. out there, take care of yourselves as well. Thanks, Ray. Thank you.